Hi everybody, Jesse here from jessiebanks.com and I'm back with another Watercolor Wednesday. So for today's video, I actually have a new set here for you all. And this is releasing tomorrow. So this is Wednesday and it's coming out on Thursday, the 15th of this month. It is, of course, from Power Poppy. It's a new digital image of theirs. It's absolutely beautiful and it is called Cup of Columbine. So these are Columbine flowers which I've done a little research on because we all know I ain't know nothing about flowers. I just like to paint pretty things. And I can paint them literally any color I want. Nothing makes me happier than if I decide to paint one bright blue. There is actually a bright blue one in existence. So that is like the best thing in the entire world. Um, they are sitting in a cute little teacup down here. I did blow up the image and crop it and stuff. Um, I will have a link to the little eye cards up above as to how I do this. Um, so yeah, but if you watch any of my other watercolor videos, I recently created this little palette here, um, full of all these beautiful colors, and I'm going to use those to paint this up. So it's kind of going to be the first run with these colors, um, using them for a complete project. Uh, I will tape it down to my table with, or to my board here with painter's tape. I have a scrap piece of paint, watercolor paper here for practicing mixing colors to make sure everything's what I want because I usually use straight from tube and this is going to be a different experience for me. I do have, this is going to put a bunch of light across here, but I do have my um, swatch chart here showing a bunch of the different tones and things I can achieve with that palette, so that's super awesome. And then I have my little roll of watercolor brushes here and the collection is slowly growing and I love paint brushes, y'all love them. So I have that here so I can pick and choose between my brushes. So I'm going to tape this down. Oh, I have a couple jugs of clean water, one for rinsing dirty and one for taking clean. So I'm going to set this up and tape it down and I will come back with a voiceover and we'll do the painting. Remember this set will be on the Power Poppy store tomorrow and I will have it linked in the description box below. All right, I'll be right back. All right, we're back with our paper top da tape down. I pulled out this hematite, hematite genuine. Um, this color and Moon Glow, which are the other the other one I do pull in for this video, for this are two colors that I really had a tough time cutting out of this 15 color palette. So I did just put a tiny dollop into them. They end up both in that same little well there on the palette in the middle, and I'll probably leave them there because I do reach for them quite a bit when I do things like wanting granulation and stems and um, for shadows and stuff like that. So I just really like them, so I put them in there. But I'm starting off just by wetting up the stems and adding that Hematite Genuine to it. I will go over it and glaze some green on top. Um, this is just a Princeton and Neptune synthetic brush that I pulled out to pull my colors out of the palette here. And I'm going to do a little swatching because that lets me make sure that the color is correct and that was not sap green enough. You can see the difference there. And that's what I was after. So that's why I didn't put any colors like sap green in here because I do have both the pigments that it takes to create this. I do notice that the video is kind of sped up funny and chunky. I hope that smooths out. Now I'm sorry about those little gaps at the start here. I hope that gets better. But we're going to start by dropping in this green just in our shadow places along our leaves just to start getting the color in there. I'm really not concerned about it being super shaded or having lots of shadows or depth or getting the dimension and shapes into it. I'm just looking at getting the color onto the areas that I want green. So I do like to work um, in lots of glazes and I work in lots of layers and I let things dry in between just so that I can get um, that feel of layering those transparent colors over top of each other so they just kind of illuminate through each other and it turns out ever so pretty than always mixing everything while the paper's still wet. Um, I do have about, I sped up about hour and a half of footage for the painting of this, when in reality it probably took me close to three and a half hours, and that's simply with dry time in between. I do tend to let my watercolors dry naturally. Um, as long as that paper's cool, it's wet, and as long as that paper's wet, those colors are moving. So if you heat set them, you kind of stop everything where it is, but if you let them dry naturally, those colors do move a little bit more in the paper as long as it's cool and wet. So I like to let them do that and just kind of not have the control and let them naturally do what watercolors do. And that's why I love them. So I, I kind of let that flow through. So I'm just continuing on adding some more depth and get, building that color up to be a little more bright and vivid and 
putting some shadows in there just to give it some dimension and things. So like I said um, in the prior part, this will be released tomorrow, this stamp set through Power Poppy. I will have the link to it in the description box below. It won't work. The image won't be there until it's released. So you can click on it all you want today. If it's not Thursday or later, um, it's not going to be there. But that's all right because it's fabulous and it'll be awesome when you guys can get it. I did twist and expand this one. I love this image. I think these flowers are absolutely gorgeous. I googled the flower because we all know I know nothing about florals. That's no secret. <laughs> I don't know anything. So I had to google them to kind of see what the colors were like and they come in any color you can imagine. Yellow, purple, purple and yellow, red and yellow, coral and yellow. I like blue like bright blue it's amazing I don't know I just I was so floored when I saw all the different colors that this came in so I was like well then we're gonna paint them all different colors because I can <laughs> this is um green appetite genuine it is a primatech color and it does granulate heavily and I really like to put it in my greenery on um pieces so that's why it made it into this palette um, if you haven't seen this palette being set up and the process and the crazy ridiculous amount of colors I went through to pick these out, I will put a link to that in the iCards up above. Um, so you can find that as long as I can remember to do it. I'll remember to do it. I hope so. If not, you guys will remind me, right? If you can't find it, tell me and I'll make sure I go put it in. How's that sound? Deal. Thanks. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. What's new with you? I don't know what's new with me. I don't know what to talk about. We're still painting leaves. And I don't want to speed it up anymore. So we're going to continue to paint leaves. I don't have a whole lot to tell you guys. Snow's melting. Um, it has been sunny and getting above zero on the regular. And everything is turning into a sloppy, gross mess. Which also means that my son comes home absolutely drenched and proceeds to not take off his wet clothes before he goes traipsing through my house and he is going to learn how to wash floors this weekend i have a big mop like it, it's really not a difficult process i have one of those spin mops and he likes spinning it anyway so i figure if you like spinning it you can learn how to use it so we're on to the flowers and i started by wetting the entire petal and then i dropped that color in right around the center and i'm letting it bleed out i found when googling these that the centers of the the main flower here were really really vivid and then they kind of faded out to like a white color and I figured I'd run with that because that's awesome and then these bigger petals and the little I don't know thingies underneath of them are super bright like the, these flowers are the craziest things I've ever seen pictures of I ain't never seen nothing like this not in real life I ain't I have not ever seen nothing anything holy you guys we're in for a treat with this voiceover I quit on to the next topic. So yeah, they're crazy bright. And I'm going to do this little bud. Um, the colors I'm using right now are quinacridone coral on the pinky flower. And this is phthalo blue green shade in um, the blues. And I'm just using the straight pigment here. It's just the first layer. Like I said, I like to work in glazes and things. So I will mix and add different colors or top. Um, and we're just kind of putzing around and working on them slowly but surely. I am truly thankful that Marcella let me work on this and get this out to you guys prior to the release because I do enjoy doing my watercolor Wednesdays. And I did not have time to film an extra video this week. I'm just getting back into the swing of things at work. And that means that I don't have as many hours as I usually do to sit and film and make fun things. So I got to get what I want my my commitments done first and then the extra things so that's kind of where we're at right now you're still gonna get at least two videos a week from me probably more but that's kind of where we are I am using my silver black velvet brushes now I've been using these brushes for I don't know a year and a half two years they're not all that old I've been accumulating them slowly I thought these were expensive um but I find that they're starting to get floppy already and like floppy brushes are no fun. I just, they don't have the snapback that they had like six months ago. And I don't paint anything super heavy. Like my images are all small. I don't work on big scale projects with them. Um, I don't leave them in water. I don't beat them up. I'm very, very gentle. I take very good care of my brushes. But I'm just finding they're not, they're not what I 
thought they were before. Now, I don't know if maybe they wear out a lot faster because they're synthetic. Okay, hold that thought. I am glazing some yellow over top of this quadacridone coral because I want that yellow to kind of peek through. In the end, you don't see a whole lot of it. I'm looking at the card here. I'm just grabbing it. Whoa, dropped things. Sorry about that noise. You do see a little bit of it, but the color doesn't come through gigantically, but I do like just that tinge of yellow in there. So I added that in. And now I have purple. This is quinacridone purple, and I'm going to mix some phthalo blue into it, and we're going to start adding that into our blue flower here. Like I said, I like to deepen up and glaze and layer colors over top of each other, and everything is completely dry before I do it. I'm not making you guys sit through. I'm having issues finding things to talk about as it is, and everybody's going to get bored of me. So I didn't want to, you know, let's sit and watch watercolor dry, because that sounds like a fun thing to do. Hope you sense the sarcasm. But anyway... <laughs> So I'm just adding this mixture in and blending it out. And you can see how the depth starts to pick up on those flowers. Like it really pushed those petals in behind back a lot further. And it really sinks in the center of this flower so that it looks like it's deeper and coming out, right? And we're going to do the same thing with our quinacridone coral here. And I'm using, I think it's still straight quinacridone coral. I do mix quinacridone red into it after um, to get it a little more pink than the quinacridone coral was so we do do that but I don't think I've done that yet and then I'm working on those little spiny spindly things in behind I do them half pink and half yellow because that's what I saw on Google that's the best part about doing things like this is you can either completely let your mind go there was another glitch there so I'm not sure why it's doing that I might be speeding up the video too much I will try not speeding it up quite as much on the next one and hopefully we won't have any weird awkward pauses um, oh, I was using the brush that I used to pull colors out. Okay, back to brushes. Oh my goodness. I apologize for this voiceover. I hope you guys still kind of like the video. Not sure why it's doing that. That's bugging me. Hmm. I'm going to try it slower on the next one. We'll see if that makes a difference. Anyway, so I'm adding quinacridone purple to these ones. But yeah, my brushes don't feel the same as they used to. I also don't use these brushes to like scrub color out of pans or anything like that. That Princeton and Neptune one that you guys saw me use on accident, it is, hang on, it's right here. I can tell you what it is. They are Princeton Brush Co. It's a round number eight. The item number is 450R. Um, I use those to scrub. They are 100% synthetic. Um, they spring back really nice, but I use them to pull most of my color out simply because I don't want to wreck my more expensive brushes but bashing them around in a pan to get things to get things going don't get me wrong like they're great little brushes but they definitely um aren't as impressive as some of the other ones that I've adapted into my arsenal something like this which is again a Princeton and Neptune brush um but it is their full squirrel line so there is no natural hair in these if that is something you're worried about but they are fabulous brushes that one is our round number 12, and this is the Princeton Neptune series. And I think these are beautiful brushes, especially for being synthetic. So I'm just kind of looking into other things. I've been looking at some sable brushes and stuff to pick up, and we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So I'm dropping color now into the centers of these flowers, and I'm using quinacridone gold. So this is the original PO49 from Daniel Smith, and I've just watered it down enough that it looks yellow instead of being too too pigmented so I like to do that kind of thing and here's where I come in with my moon glow again that's what I'm using on this entire teacup sorry I was babbling on about brushes when we did all of this and I kind of missed some of it and I do believe I lost some of the footage for some of it so if there was a gap in there that's why um, I believe I recorded the stuff that didn't matter and didn't record the stuff that did so you know because that happens sometimes <laughs> in other words I recorded the dry time and I didn't record the painting part because I pushed the button the wrong order but that's all right I am taking French ultramarine and I'm dropping this into the background I really like this color for in backgrounds and things um it granulates beautifully and that's why I like to put it in there it's also super bright and vivid and it's gonna really make um all of these images pop so I just kind of drop it in highly concentrated in certain little corners and folds and then I take some clean clear water and blend it out into the background that is why it's important to have those two jugs of water that I was mentioning at the beginning simply to 
be able to have that clean water to brush out and it's not going to be muddy and have all those other colors that you've cleaned off your brush in there. So once we get all this French ultramarine dropped in and blended out, I do add a little bit of moon glow in um, around those stems at the base of the teacup just so that it looks really, really dark like the inside of the teacup would simply because I made the outside gray. Um, that's a personal preference if you want it light or dark inside. I went dark because I figured the flowers and leaves and everything would cast a shadow in there. So that is the end of this card. I do take it and I didn't record this part. I cut it down to four by five and a quarter inches and mounted it on an A2 top folding card. I do lots of watercolor videos and Copics and colored pencils and all sorts of fun things. So if you aren't subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you did subscribe. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Thumbs it up if you love watercolor and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.